everyone, welcome to Curtain Call. I'm Kevin Curtin. I'm here today in New York City with some very special guests. And these gentlemen right here are Rock and Roll Hall of Famers. They've been in the business over 50 years and they're one of the greatest groups in music history. It's truly an honor to be here with them today. They have a brand new album coming out called The Last Word, April 19th. Make sure you pick it up. And they also have a show coming up at the Apollo, April 26th. Make sure you check that out. And some other tour dates, make sure you check those out as well. So listen, without further ado, I want to introduce you to the legendary Eddie Levert and Walter Williams, and they are the mighty, mighty OJs. Yeah, Gentlemen, yeah. thank you for being here. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much for the time. So let's, let's get right into this. So let's talk about the new album. You know, obviously, uh, we all know it's, it's the last word. It's the final album. It's truly a gift for all the longtime OJ fans that have been waiting, you know. What's, um, what was it like to record the record? What inspired it? And um, what was it like being back in the studio working on this final album? It was, it was something that we, we wanted to do. We wanted, you, you know how you want to just have that last fight? Sure. Uh, before somebody come and knock you out. <laughs> so, 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 so we, uh, we wanted to record something that was going to be memorable, that will put a stamp on our career to let people know with, that we're still able to do great music. So, and it was a Toby along with uh, Mr. Steve Greenberg who came sure. up and assisted us in doing this, mm -hmm. picked out the material, got the producers together and uh, set up the strategy of how we were going to do this thing. Yeah. So, and it turned out pretty well to me. I, we, 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 got, we came up with a pretty good album. I might not have, uh, uh, I might have went up just a little bit more uh, gut bucket <laughs> yeah. than yeah. he did. Sure. But they, they, I think they gave the fans what they really wanted. Yeah. With the, the OJ sound. I mean, listen, you, you guys have so many incredible albums. You know, your catalog is just unbelievable. You know, everything. You guys have been, you know, doing this for so long. And I guess, you know, the, the thing to me that I was kind of wondering is, you know, when you guys got back in the studio, you know, kind of going up against all those great albums, how did you kind of, you know, say, hey, listen, you know, I, this is the benchmark. Did you compare it to anything? Did you try and match it up to any of your old albums? That, well, you know? I, I think we did, but I think what Steve Greenberg did was yeah. he, he searched out the writers mm -hmm. and the producers that he thought would work best with us. Mm. And... Um, like in the old days, they stretched our necks. Right. And uh, they, they gave these songs, they were good songs, and they yeah. gave them to us in high keys so that they could get that urgency in our voices. Yeah. And we didn't spend a lot of time on these songs like we normally do, mm -hmm. but from the, uh, from the demos, yes. they had really good demos, really good people singing those demos, and mm -hmm. we just went line for line and captured what they were most interested in and how the album sounded yeah. and how we sounded singing those songs. Sure. And, I, and I think they got what they wanted. Hmm. So listen, I, I wanna, if we can, go back in time here. You know, can you take me back to 19, I mean, listen, in the 60s, <coughs> you, you guys were going from label to label, you're working with a lot of different labels in the 60s. But in the 70s, obviously, you get with Kenny and Leon, right? Yeah. yeah. And all of a sudden, you know, the hits start rolling, right? Um, can you take me back to the classic Backstabbers album and talk a little bit about, if you can, um, the, the song Backstabbers, which McFadden and Whitehead wrote, and also Love Train. Um, can you tell me a little bit about kind of, you know, going into the studio or first hearing those songs and working with, you know, the writers and producers on those records? Well, it, it, speaking about Backstabbers, yes. Uh, like, you know, you only have a piano and you have Gene and John singing and dancing, trying mm -hmm. to present the song to you. Yeah. And you're listening to it and you're, yeah. you're and with just the piano and you're saying, uh, yeah, it's okay, <laughs> uh, we'll learn it. Sure. You know, we're, we're, we're a little apprehensive because this is our first album mm -hmm. with them. And we're, this is our first, well, this is our second time going with them because they had the, uh, the, 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 they were distributed by Chess Records at first. Sure. And then they made the deal with, uh, with Columbia, Sony. Yes. And, um, CBS. Yeah. So, so after they made their deal, we're coming back from a bad situation. So right. now they're presenting the songs and, yeah. and they're, we're saying it's okay, it's a good song. Yeah. And, uh, 
But when they went in the studio, yeah. Gambling enough. This yeah. is what they didn't write the song. Right. We but they were able to take they were taking the idea that they gave them yeah. and they did a rhythm track with no vocals on it. Yeah. And you could tell from the rhythm track that it was it was something was going on. Yeah. Then when we went in and did our background vocals, right. it went to another level. Right. Then when we did our lead vocals, mm -hmm. we automatically knew this was something special. Yeah. yeah. And then the next time we heard it, we yeah. were in Colorado somewhere yeah. in the middle of <laughs> nowhere. Radio. Yeah. And it came on the radio and we're listening. Yeah. But we're not associating this song mm -hmm. to us. Mm -hmm. And it goes dun 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 and we say, Well, where have we heard that before? Yeah. And then he says, the backstabbers, and yeah. we realize that we have a hit record. Sure. And uh, you can tell them about Love Train. Oh, well, Love Train. Uh, How was that presented to you? How was that song presented? You know, did you come into the studio uh, in, one in night? One and of, it was... In one of the practice rehearsals. Yeah. And uh, they wanted to record it, mm -hmm. but they hadn't finished writing it. Mm -hmm. So we go in the studio again. and. Mm -hmm. We start doing backgrounds and stuff because we always laid the background tracks down first, about four of them, so yeah. that they would be thick. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes time to do the lead, he only has one verse. Really? So he wrote the second verse while yeah. we were in this in the in the studio A talking to Joe Tarsia, yeah. <laughs> clowning around. Yeah. And he finished writing it, mm -hmm. and then we go out into the studio yeah. and perform it on tape mm -hmm. and everybody knew this is they knew this is something special yeah. again yeah i mean saying the right yeah. thing and and uh delivering it the yeah. right way and and of course we when we record we had our own boots mm -hmm. looking at each other yeah so that that continuity would would happen mm -hmm. you know he sings something and i would say right. something. The back and, and forth yeah, exactly yeah yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and uh when it was over mm -hmm. Everybody felt that it was something special. Did you have any idea it would be a number one hit? No. 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 So no, what, because what, it was nobody a... knew that. <laughs> Do you remember kind of seeing the charts or being in the car and hearing it on the radio for the first time or seeing it on the billboard at number Man, one? I, what was I, your kind of I reaction? I still couldn't and... believe it. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's a very simple song. Mm -hmm. It's not complicated. Right. You know, I still couldn't believe that this little five minute song mm -hmm. have turned into this monster song yeah. that everybody could relate to. Yeah. It, it, it changed everything, everything for us because it was that kind of record that just kept selling and selling and going up the charts mm -hmm. and going up the charts and we were not prepared for it. Yeah. We had to go get new uniforms made. Yeah. Uh, we had to hire a choreographer, Charlie yes. Atkins. Yes. And, uh, it was a minute because we didn't have choreography for yeah. it. We performed it, but yeah. we had little simple steps. And when the old man saw that, he said, "Now nah, we <laughs> got to do better than that. Yeah. And uh, he taught us some, some routines. Mm -hmm. And then we felt adequate. We felt like we could go out yeah. and headline right. and do the right things that we yeah. were supposed to do with yeah. a record like that. Right. You know, looking back and just kind of looking back on the career and all the hits and all the music and touching all these people all over the world, what are you most proud of and, and what do you kind of want your legacy to be when, you know, when you're not here anymore? Well, I would say that we gave it our all every time we hit the stage. We enjoyed doing it. Uh, there were bad nights, always. Sure. You know, there's going to be some good, some bad. Hopefully there were more good than bad. And uh, what I would like to leave them with is that we did our very best every time out. And um, that's, that's what I want to leave them with. Eddie? Hey, man. Um, that every time they came to see us, mm -hmm. it was worth the price of the ticket. It was worth, we gave our all, we did we everything. We gave the people what yes. they want. We did what <laughs> exactly. we had to do. That was yeah. the whole 
gist yeah. of it. No more, yeah. no less. Yeah. 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 Well, listen, I want I want to thank you guys for being on the show. I want oh, to thank you for thank your time. You. It's thank truly you. an thank honor. You. Thank you. Looking forward to the new album. I'm going to try and get to the Apollo show. Okay. So I'm make try sure. And be there. And, make sure. Uh, and listen. It's, and then then it's, maybe you can ask some more questions. Yeah. Hey, listen, <laughs> what, you know, in the future, hopefully we can get a you know a whole uh, uh, day yeah. blocked yeah. off, and we could talk about the OJs Absolutely. all day. You know what I mean? I'm like an OJ historian, so absolutely talk all day. But anyway. It was truly an honor. I want to thank you guys again. Make sure you check them out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, at the Mighty OJs, right, on Twitter and, and, uh, and Instagram, and then they have a Facebook page. And we're on uh, Curtain Call 87 on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you again, and guys, it's been a pleasure. pleasure. Thank you so much. Walter, appreciate it.